cooking a meal on the North Shore of Lake Erie at sundown. What a perfect way to wrap up an incredible day. I'm Miranda Keys. It's the final episode of Five Stops Season 1. And Food and Drink Magazine has asked Chef Devin Rajkumar and I to get back on the road together and explore one last region of Ontario. We'll be visiting five food and drink destinations, picking up some amazing local ingredients and then whipping up a barbecue feast inspired by our culinary adventure. I am so happy that we got to do this last episode together. It has been a journey. It's amazing to know that just in our backyard, we have so much artisanal food and drink. It's right at our fingertips. It really is. And I cannot believe we're doing another one together today. This is an incredible fall day, and I'm so, so happy to be sharing this with you. Miranda and Devin, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're on the north shore of Lake Erie to check out Essex County, the southernmost region in Canada. Long summers and mild winters make Essex a sweet spot for farmers and for people who, like us, love to eat. This place is known for greenhouse growing, so much agriculture out here, and of course, distilleries, wineries. We're gonna see so much cool stuff. I can't wait to see what we get today and we're gonna put it all together for this barbecue. I can't wait. I can't wait either. I feel like we're just gonna have endless options for dinner tonight. For our first stop, we're headed to Wolfhead Distillery, home to Kavi Whiskey, Canada's first ever blend of Canadian whiskey and cold brew coffee. So we're at Wolfhead Distillery. Jackie, you are one of the co-creators of this Kavi whiskey, right? Yeah, Kavi is like my little baby. So I, there's actually four of us that started it. And uh, one of the owners of Wolfhead is a, is a business partner of mine. So this is the home of Kavi. Amazing, and this is coffee and whiskey combined, right? Exactly. So we've set up something a little bit different today. Um, we've actually deconstructed the product for you. Mm -hmm. So um, I have some base Canadian whiskey for you to try, along with some cold brew, which you can actually try and then we'll try the product in its final version after you've kind of tried the original components on its own. Fantastic. So what we do is we actually create a custom blend of Canadian whiskey specific for combining with cold brew coffee. So you'll notice it's got like a nice light oakiness to it. It's not too overpowering because again, we don't want it to be overpowering the coffee. We want it to be a complimenting effect. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice the same thing with the cold brew. Butterscotchy. Yeah, it's, it's got a nice nose on it, although on the palate you get like a nice vanilla, light oakiness. You know what, it's delicious. I'm not normally a whiskey drinker, but this is definitely something that's easy to kind of sip on. It's not a super strong flavor, but really delicious. So this is our cold brew coffee, and it's actually been a custom developed specifically to incorporate into Canadian whiskey. You'll notice when you sip it, it's not going to be overpowering on the palate. Uh, we use five different beans from four different countries in Central and South America. Uh, they're roasted locally. Uh, we have a really nice partnership with uh, Colonial Coffee. So it's all made per batch. So as soon as we're going to start a new batch, the coffee comes in and we cold brew it right away. That tastes delicious. It's light tasting. You can very see light. it's yeah. a very light color, but tastes it's not very a lot refreshing. Not at all. Exactly nice. what's important for combining with whiskey. So we'll move on and you can actually try the final blend. So what makes this very unique is um, once we've finished the cold brewing process and the Canadian whiskey blend is ready for coffee to be incorporated into it, we actually barrel blend it in, uh, in oak barrels. So it doesn't just rest in vats, it's in barrels together. And you'll notice what happens is you'll get the Canadian whiskey coming through first. It'll have a light oakiness to it with some sweet vanilla and then the coffee will actually come through in the finish. So you get this beautiful layering effect mm -hmm. where you're not gonna get an overpowering of coffee and it's gonna complement the whiskey, the mouthfeel, and the character. It's really nice, it has a little bit of sweetness to it. And you're right, the coffee kind of kicks in at the end. 
You get the whiskey at the beginning. That's really delicious. We do have something a little bit fun that it's really easy to do at home. Uh, we actually make a custom orange bitters that's specific to go with cold brew coffee blended whiskey. So in order to make an old fashioned, all you have to do is drop in three or four drops of our orange bitters okay. into the glass. So then you're gonna grab a piece of orange zest. Thank you. And you're gonna rim the edge of the glass with the, so that's the key. So when you're sipping it, you'll notice you actually smell the orange as the whiskey enters your palate. The so. orange, coffee, whiskey, it all goes together beautifully. So everything is bottled and made here on site? Yeah, so uh, we handcraft everything and it's bottled on site. What's kind of fun about Wolfhead is we've actually designed it so that it can grow with demand. So um, our bottling line is kind of now a combination of like hand bottling and automation just because our, our demand's been growing. So we're still um, handwriting all the batch numbers on each bottle. My mom's actually hand tying every single neck tag that goes onto these. She's done 65,000 now. Wow. Uh, but yeah, we, we've, we've had to get to the point that we've had to install wow. a little mini bottling line yeah. just to keep up with demand, which is a good problem to have. Yeah, that's amazing. Miranda, what's our next stop? Okay, we're going to Lee and Maria's roadside stand. Love roadside stands. Aren't they the best? This place is really cool because they started as a really small stand and now they've grown to this big elevated food destination. We're gonna get some amazing stuff for our dinner. Ah, yeah. We started uh, 42 years ago now, and we started at the road, and then we did that for several years, and then as the years progressed, we just kept getting busier and busier and bigger. And then 12 years ago, my dad built the market, and he put this up, and then we just kind of started filling it, and then we just were able to, to grow more and do more. There are so many of us down the road, like fruit stands that there is, but we're about the only one along this stretch that has uh, a market to this degree. Who are Lee and Maria? Lee and Maria are my mom and dad. They're the namesake of who we are and what we do. So what do you grow in the fields back here? So we grow a combination of corn, beans, tomatoes, potatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, sweet peas and pickles whole bunch of different herbs, but we're at the end of the season. So right now we're just harvesting the rest of what we do have out there so that we're gonna start working the land and prepping it for, for the winter and then have it ready for the, the spring. Very few things are more satisfying than cutting fresh herbs. I totally agree. And these are starting to flower, so they're actually gonna make a beautiful garnish and nice. they'll also taste delicious. That'll look really pretty in a, in a cocktail, those little flowers. I agree. This looks beautiful. You're always food styling. You don't even mean to be doing it. I know. Wow, this is stunning. It's just what I do. For our dinner tonight, we're grabbing some freshly frozen fish straight out of Lake Erie, which they also sell here at Lee and Maria's, along with fresh potatoes, onions, squash, and anything else that gets us hungry. For our next stop, we're getting a special behind the scenes look inside a company that, like Lee and Maria's, started out as a small, family-run roadside produce stand. So, for our next stop, we're off to Del Fresco. Really big farm. Yeah, I'm so excited about this place. I think it's acres upon acres, greenhouses. Yeah, they grow everything hydroponically, and this is where you can get local peppers, strawberries, cucumbers, all kinds of things, all year round. A hydroponic, a hydroponic farm. farm, but you're gonna get to see one today. So is this all, everything that you picked recently, you store here? Yeah, so there's peppers in here, there's tomatoes in here, there's cubes in here. This is the biggest fridge I've ever been inside. Yeah, well, there's bigger ones around. <laughs> really? What sets your produce apart? What makes you special? Hydroponic produce is very special because it's very socially responsible. It uses 90% less chemicals than outdoor farming. You bring bees in here too? We bring pollinate? bees in here too. They do all the jobs that way I used to do when I was a little boy, pollinating by hand. 
when I was a little boy. Yeah. The industry was about 160, 170 acres, and now the wow. industry is almost 3,300 acres. Carl, where are we right now? But right now, you're at the main plant. There's uh, 45 acres of greenhouse produce. And we're standing in front of local Ontario strawberries in the fall season. You are. How we, is that happening? We learned how to grow over the last three, four years, strawberries that are indigenous to North America. You plant them and about four or five weeks after you plant them, you start harvesting the strawberries. So Carl, you're gonna show us the correct way to pick a strawberry, right? The thing is, is you don't wanna to put too much pressure on that berry because then it'll bruise and then the store will be upset with you, but you just grab it and there's a, kind of a wrist flick there. And you know what I love as a chef? I love using these two-tone color strawberries, the ones that aren't fully ripe. Visually on a plate, this looks amazing. You can pickle them, we can mandolin them. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do, but everyone's used to the deep red strawberries, but Miranda, do you agree? Oh, well, I love the red ones for color because yeah. it's really hard to get these out of season and like taste good and they look good. And these, I'm gonna look for these everywhere now. I'm almost full over here. I'm full too. Well, I'm on my second. <laughs> for our fourth stop, a quick visit to the town of Kingsville to pick up some protein for our meal. Butcher of Kingsville. Here it is. So for dinner tonight, we're cooking on the beach. We have an amazing spread that we're preparing. What can you recommend for us? Sure, well, one of the things I highly recommend is trying some of the dry aged beef. Awesome. It's not something you find very readily because it's a somewhat of a difficult process, but it's got a lot of things that really make the meat stand out. What the dry aging does is twofold. One, it allows the meat to desiccate or dry out, so it concentrates that flavor. And secondly, it allows the enzymes enough time to break down the proteins, resulting in more tender meat. We're done shopping. We're getting really hungry, and it's almost time for our last five stops dinner of the season, a sunset beach barbecue on the north shore of Lake Erie. Okay, we're going to Sprucewood Shores Winery now. Yeah, this is our final stop. Uh, we have the T-bones, we have those dill pickle sausages, we have this whiskey now. We have a lot of cool ingredients to play with tonight. Yeah, lots of beautiful produce, and we're gonna have some beautiful wines to try to go with our dinner. I can't wait to get cooking. This couldn't be any more beautiful where we are right now. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here today? So right now you're at Sprucewood Shores Winery. It's my family's winery and we've been here since 2003. We, uh, we find that uh, people enjoy our product and hopefully introduce them to a place here that's uh, you know, a great place to come visit too. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful here. So this is our Sprucewood Shores Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. It's a really great wine for a starter for your meals if uh, you're having an outdoor barbecue like this mm -hmm. and you want to enjoy something with your salad, you want to have a little bit of seafood. And Pinot Grigio really is one of those grapes that's easy for everyone to enjoy. So refreshing. That's wonderful. Really Thank citrusy, you. floral. Delicious. A lot of wines can be either a fruit bomb, too juicy, um, you know, almost lacking acidity, structure. These are classic wine elements, things that give a wine that wine flavor, wine taste. This still retains those classic wine elements. It's got a nice tannin to it, a little bit of a grip in your mouth. Really, really good, delicious. I feel with that dry aged steak that we have, this would be a perfect pairing. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Cheers to that. I think we should Cheers go eat. We have the picnic tables full of our beautiful produce and the different items that we picked up throughout the day. We have our friends here, and we're about to have some drinks and cook up a storm. First up, we're going to be cooking some steaks really simply because these are 70 day dry aged T-bones. So those are gonna get cooked on the charcoal barbecue. We'll be searing up some dill pickle sausages as well as the hot Italians. 
We also have some roasted new potatoes cooked in cast iron with lots of delicious grasslands butter. I'm also preparing a beautiful ceviche, vibrant with all the flavors of the onion, the hot pepper, the jalapeno maple syrup, and some beautiful plums that we picked up from Lee and Maria's. And finally, sauteing some red peppers and onions. For dessert, I'm gonna use those beautiful strawberries that we got from Del Fresco today and combine them with fresh cream. I'm gonna to top it off with Cavi, that amazing coffee whiskey. I'm gonna make a Paloma-inspired cocktail using grapefruit vodka from Wolfhead. It's gonna have a little grapefruit juice, topped up with some lime soda, some club soda, and finished with grapefruit zest. Today in Essex County was amazing. Getting to spend the day with Dev again was absolutely fantastic. We discovered some amazing places here that I really didn't even know existed. Amazing distilleries, beautiful wine, fantastic produce. Ontario never ceases to amaze me. Right in my backyard, we have the best produce, the best items available to us. Getting the opportunity to spend the day with Miranda again has been exceptional. She's so much fun to hang out with and she made this experience better than it already was.